Today, we're talking about some exciting news from Figma Config 2021, day number one. But first, it's my face, it's me. I figured as we hit a thousand subs, it'd be fun to put a face to the name, but I know you're not here for my face, you're here for Figma news. So I wanna dive in casually today and just walk through some of the things they released, talk through some of my opinions on them, do a deep, deep dive later, and we'll have dedicated videos for those. But today, let's jump in, a lot of cool things to cover. So right off the bat, one of the big things they announced today was Fig Jam, which is their idea of a collaborative space for the full product team. You know, developers, designers, your OMs, your PMs, the full gamut. It's designed to compete against products like Mural. Uh, I think Envision also has a similar product. Uh, Mira, I think is another one. And these places are just kind of like digital whiteboards. But Figma's version is taking on the tried and true standards of online whiteboards, integrating that with your Figma files, your Figma components even. You can create design systems for your whiteboarding sessions, which is awesome. And really integrating all of that deeply into one tool so you can get to it on the Figma product that we already have today. And um, it's live right now, so go check it out. It's in beta, so it's free, but I know they plan to charge, I think it's $8 a seat, uh, up to $15 a seat once they launch it in 2022 with their full you know, 1.0 release. Um, so you know, definitely get in now while you can over the next year, try it out, see if it's something you'd pay for. Um, I know me personally, I'm excited about transitioning away from Mural, so this is gonna be something that I'm very looking forward to. There's also a great video, uh, which I'll just dive into now. We can just uh, watch it together. Yeah, I love that toolbar design. Very uh, iOS. They spend a lot of time with the micro interactions on that toolbar and even with these like emoji responses. Oh, it's just so polished. Yeah, of course you can do flows, which is great. You don't need a separate tool for doing flows. Yeah, here's an example of the components. You can design your own. I think they even support overrides in, in different uh, ways. I've seen them use that for text. I don't know if they support other kind of overrides, but it's still cool you can integrate your components. Yeah, so this is an example of publishing a library that then you can use cross team in the, you know, in the singular whiteboard experience here. Yeah, it's dope. I'm gonna pause it there because I know there's a little bit at the end that we'll uh, we'll touch on in a second. Uh, one of the less exciting uh, things, but something to be aware of, uh, is an increase on the active collaborator uh, collaborator limit for uh, design files. I'm not sure how many of y'all are gonna use this, but um, I guess it might be useful for presentations if you want everyone in the same place. But uh, Figma files can have up to 500 active participants, which is crazy. And then up to 50 in FigJam files. Um, so pretty useful if you have that kind of uh, team size or uh, you're able to scale to that size. If you can hit 500 people in a Figma file and you can do that and still stay sane, all the power to you. I think that's crazy. They also made some adjustments to the starter plan. This might actually affect a lot of people. I know there's a large portion of people that don't pay for Figma, uh, which is, you know, it's understandable. They offered a lot for the free teams. Really, if you wanted to organize, you might look to paying, but I think they're making some larger changes today to how the starter plans work. One of the nice things though is uh, they've increased the collaborator limit to now be uh, uncapped which is awesome. Uh, I tried to do this back when I was uh, did some teaching and it was tough to get students in without doing with the licensing and everything. So this is a great way to address that concern. Uh, I know there are some limitations on number of files. I think it's now three files uh, and there's three pages within them. So there's definitely a stricter limit, but if you are just doing a couple of things, it should work pretty well for you. And then of course, if you like it, you know, pay for it. It's not very much and uh, I would love to see Figma keep iterating and keep innovating. So you know, maybe support them if you can. Branches is really cool. So this is similar uh, if you've ever done like 
Git branches before, if you've done any development or you've worked with development tools, this would allow you to take a file, a design file, and then branch off of it, make your changes all in that kind of its own sandbox. And then you can merge it back into that master file. You only merge the changes that you made. And then that master file, if it's a library or, or you know design system, it's able then to make those changes and send them out. So it gives you a safe space to make changes, iterate, practice different things without affecting the main design system. Now, of course, you could do that kind of before if you just didn't want to publish your changes, but this really gives you that full safe sandbox to work, practice in, iterate on, and do so with multiple people. And you could have, I think it's unlimited number of branches. So, you know, make a ton of branches, try all these different things out, and then merge things back in as needed. Of course, I'd imagine similar ideas apply with, with how Git works, you know, merging branches. If you do have tons of them and they, they become out of sync, it becomes harder to merge. So the good best practices for branching and versioning would still exist in this scenario. Uh, they're making a new mobile app. This is pretty exciting. I know the current one is not the greatest. Um, this is pretty exciting. I, uh, I'll open this up right now. Um, I think they have any screenshots in here. Yeah, so a couple of different ideas for, for the visuals here. Uh, gives you access to your files, allows you to still do the mirroring experience, uh, but even just this, having access to your files so you can just jump in, potentially edit if you're on an iPad, or just jump right into a mirror session from your phone is huge. It takes away so many of the pain points I had with the current experience. So uh, very excited about this one. Don't think the app is released yet. I believe it's in, yeah, it's in beta. So it'll be, it'll be a little bit before we get it fully out, but it looks like it's coming sometime this year. Okay, uh, last up is audio. Uh, so I'll go back to that video that I had up because there's a teaser at the end for audio. Hey, are you there? <gasps> People talking. Hello. So that's all the teaser is. Um, it's showing that they want to integrate audio um, kind of clubhouse style if you've used that app uh, into Figma and FigJam. So you'll be able to have audio within your design files and within your FigJam files, which is gonna be awesome. It looks like it's gonna show up in a very similar UI to how you can see the active collaborators in a file. So that will be a nice, just easy way to, to talk, especially if you don't want to hop on like a, uh, you know, a Slack call or hop on to you know, a Zoom call just to talk through something. Just hop in design file, do a quick kind of old school uh, you know, voice, VoIP session there, boom, hop off, uh, no meeting invites, nothing like that to me is what I'm most excited about. Just having that integrated into it is going to be really, really seamless. Um, obviously. Uh, the big thing from today is Fig Jam. I think it's the thing most people are excited about. It's the thing that's already out in everyone's hands. You can start playing with it right now if you just go to your, your Figma app. Uh, when you're gonna make a new file, you can select Fig Jam as one of the options. So go play with it. Uh, let me know what you think. Would you switch away from Mural to a tool like Fig Jam? Uh, and if not, like what would it take for you to switch? Definitely interested to hear y'all's thoughts on that. But that's it from me for day one. Stay tuned, I'll have some content for you tomorrow, which is the last day of the Config 2021 conference. Don't know how many big features are gonna come out uh, tomorrow. I'm really hoping for a dark theme, a dark mode. Um, so if that's the case, you'll definitely see a video from me about that. But until next time, I'm Max.